for Blue Mine. <laughs> <laughs> we at uh, Bunbury is equivalent of the Radio Hill Lookout. Built something like this in Minecraft. Is, but yes, with the stairs. And the hill is so pathetically small that they had to build a tower to compensate. At least that's my fan theory. Bunbury did exist long before Newman did, but that's just my fan theory. So, what you doing? Stuff. Stuff. I'm stuff. Things. Yes. Stuff and things. You guys wanted me to destroy Triple M. Now, it's going to be more than just a couple of boys from WA on here. The wonderful milk carton that is in Bunbury. Coming for we're at an arcade. Hopefully, we win some prizes. So, uh, did you win anything? <laughs> Bunbury is a city located about an hour from Perth. With a population of 100,000 people, it barely scrapes the subjective global standard for a city and is the only place besides the state capital to do so in Western Australia. What can you expect from Bunbury? Well, in terms of looks, it fits the description of every single moderately sized place in the southern end of the country, which to be fair includes exclusively Bunbury and I think Albury Wodonga. I visited Bunbury recently and was not disappointed by the people. In fact, the only thing that I was disappointed by the entire trip was myself packing shorts with fake pockets. Like, look, fake pockets. You can't see from over here, but just pretend they're fake. Because that, that's what they are, that's the truth. I don't know why you need to pretend, it's an objective fact. But still, that is my most major disappointment and is completely irrelevant to Bunbury itself. Much like CIA agents trying to break into parties and unions in foreign nations, the first steps for me to learn about this town is to recruit some local sleeper agents into my cause. The easiest way to do that is to walk into a local shopping centre until you see someone who looks like a Skyrim follower eating a straight up baguette. Trust me on that one, textbook CIA metastrats. Have you researched CIA methods? No. So how would you know? Clearly I am correct in this matter as I am telling you the facts and you aren't talking back because you, you, are from the future. What would the people from the future know? Nothing. It'll be climate change friggin' bandits or something. Nothing to do with the current, current conversation. So I'll move on. Yes, so I was able to uncover some insider knowledge on some Bunbury elite. The mogul who runs the entire town like puppets on a string. A man who could replace the media empire of Rupert Murdoch with his very own voice. The ruthless rapper, known only by a secret identity. Heshdog. Look, with the power of this man's voice, Heshdog is the true king of Bunbury. Nothing gets past his infinite wisdom and gaze. I would not be surprised if his music is what determines the events of the world. Heshdog, I am looking to do a collab any day, any time that conveniently fits into my schedule. Which I don't have, so suck me. But collab, let's go, Hashdog. You and me. I don't know what we're gonna do, but let's do something. To quote the best band of all time, The Waves, me, a boy from the north, you, not a woman, but from the south, together, no homo. That's all I wrote about Bunbury. I really wasn't paying attention the whole time I was on holidays there. But up next, have me, Doing a random thing with a baguette. That sounds very sus, but you know what I mean. I was, I was making a spaghetti. It was like a baguette and it had spaghetti inside. Enjoy. Okay, bruh, so today we're gonna be talking about friggin' making, making the hoodoos. Hoodoos meal right here. It's gonna be called the spaghetti. It's gonna be your ultimate street survival meal, okay? Now, we're gonna go into the footage of its creation. It's, it's a marvelous thing, anyone can do it. It's pretty fucking ace of that. Today I'll be publicly creating a spaghetti in a public... I don't know where I am right now. You're in a Mom? shopping centre. Uh, <laughs> a supermarket. Yeah, we're gonna smuggle it into a friggin' um, 
that thing, those clubs, all the, all the kids talk, talk about these days. By kids, I mean, let's be honest, it's a millennial thing. Kids don't, they just don't talk to people these days. They subscribe to my YouTube channel and said, so if you want to be cool, subscribe to Loom High. But yeah, I'm put all of my cooking skills to the test. Not that I have cooking skills, but I mean, I'm putting uh, spaghetti inside of a baguette, so I assume that's at least level 2 cooking, and I'm like level 1.5, so, you know. There she is. We might need the device. Did I already pass it? I already passed it. <laughs> We're here to look for the long lost spaghetti. The baguette was the difficult part. The baguette is the hard part. It's going to be difficult. <sighs> But that's beyond our alley. That's for all the um, boots. I guess. What it was? Snogs? Snogs. That's the word. We're not getting the program stuff because we're not we're not that cool. We got at least a little bit of drip. So we're going for the classic middle of the ground SPC spaghetti. Um, you know, it's where home brand isn't quite bad enough for you, but you're still a poor version and you need something to eat. So. Together at last, now, we've come to the conclusion that this is going to be the de best device to use in a public space legally, given I pro it's probably not a good, a good idea to have a knife just out in public. Now to start the cooking. My wonderful studio, um, trust me boys, I'm just using that really cool green screen I showed earlier. This is not um, a weird car parking lot in a middle of nowhere town in Australia. It's not Bunbury, I swear. Um, <clears throat> now to start cooking. Here's the receipt that's proof in case you thought this was really cool Photoshop, which I'm totally capable of doing on a cracked version of Sony Vegas 14. <laughs> Alrighty. We get one of these bread tags and add them to our collection. Everyone has a collection of bread tags. I love having these side pockets on my but it's start. Making a video. <laughs> Don't judge us. We are trained professionals. <laughs> <laughs> this is our friend Jono. Here we are. <laughs> What's up? Now this is how so, you hack a piece of piece of baguette. Yeah. So we're, we're making Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> man the rat rat. That's on you, man. That's on I you. Am um, you need to sanitize, sanitize the cooking station. That's how you open glad wrap. I am a trained professional. <laughs> Just look at him. He does not look like a trucker or a serial killer, so you know he's a professional. Right. <laughs> We're a responsible nope. channel. A little bit away. Yeah, that's okay. We're a little bit responsive. A little bit responsive. Can we make a bench out of it? Yes. There you go. There's your... Well, my audience studies hospitality, you know what's up. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start off with emptying out this small bit, not because it's going to be a sacrificial lamb, but because it's important, I swear. Yep. Now, just remember, guys, bread is biodegradable, um, I hope. Um, so this is totally fine. Hey, it turns out you can just squish bread, so that's, I don't even have to do any wastage. That's, that's the wonder of bread, people. Perfect. You don't even lose any calories. So anyone who wants to make this, I assume because of the background that it is only homeless people that want to make this kind of food, uh, which I'm, as actually technically I think most Australians at this point in time, um, then have a free go at it. Okay, that's one bit done. We should have we should have really got some glue to glue it back together. I'm pretty sure glue is edible. So you just keep digging, you're digging it in like that, and you're just kind of severing the flesh of this wheaty beast until you think you've reached the bottom, or at least until you think you can fit a whole can of spaghetti in there. Um, alrighty, so we got both halves done. We had our editor to open the can already. If you want tips on how to open a can of spaghetti, I'm afraid you're gonna have to find another YouTuber because you are absolutely fucked if you think you can make a dish as complicated as this and can't open a single yes. can of spaghetti, you doofus. Yep. <sighs> Shout out to how to basically open a can of spaghetti. How to basic cringe play. Anyway, um, I don't have YouTube beef with how to basic. It's just that their instructions are hard to follow. Uh, would you like you to do the honors assistant? Pour the beautiful spaghetti in. It's, it's not going. 
Oh, right, I forgot it's I SPC spaghetti and basically, um, not even a liquid. <laughs> it's basically jello. I'm gonna just scoop. There we go. That's got... the can do attitude. Yes. Probably should have gotten a spoon so you could actually put it in better. Oh, it's going. Hold it there for a second. I, I, I have a plan. Oh no. That's terrifying. Alright, so you stuff it in like it's a musket, a bullet apparently. Um, this lot. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> oh, the, the big head's like twice as heavy now. <laughs> like, you can physically feel the weight. Okay, a little bit on this end. Okay, that's the glue. And then we attach it together like this and grab the glad wrap, will we? And we'll wrap it up like a bandage. And then I'm pretty sure, because at this point I'm pretty sure this thing is a living entity, it will heal itself over the next two to six weeks. Um, so if you just leave it like this, she'll be right back. Alright, that or it's mold that does it, I don't know. Ah, beautiful, and now we need to wrap the rest, rest of it. And I am wanted in New South Wales. But luckily, they're in lockdown. Suck in New South Wales. Right, just to double make sure we'll go back. Cool, this thing is now more glad wrapped than that to get, but that was by design to make it look nicer. Because, get this, because we're a YouTube channel, we like doing false advertising. Haha, -ha, you just got clickbaited 10 minutes into the video. Suck in. Well, there's now, a... that's a hefty piece of ham, minus the ham. Add the bread and spaghetti. Oh my god, spaghetti is just wheat, right? I believe so, so this yeah. is a wheat sandwich. This is a basically a bread sandwich. Wheat tomato. This has been a waste of seven dollars. Waste? I well, mean, there are alternative expenditures that probably would have been better. You know, opportunity cost and all that, like spending two hundred dollars on two vaporing on uh, toys. That would have been much better spending. Oh wait, we did do that. <laughs> pow pow. From the Historical Encyclopedia of Western Australia, edited by Jenny Gregory and Jan Gothard. <clears throat> Bunbury. Named for Army Lieutenant Henry St. Pierre Bunbury in 1839, attracted few settlers until the failed venture of an, a nearby Australian provided substantial numbers in 1840-41. John Wollaston's new church at Picton in 1842 did nothing to address social problems, including friction with Aborigines. Plans for whaling, timber, sandalwood exports, and commercial crops floundered before convict transportation brought economic and social change from 1850. School teacher James Hillslop and celebrated escapee John Boyle O'Reilly were less typical convicts than those who formed a depressed labouring class in a town under the political sway of Australian leader Marshall Waller Clifton and his family until the end of transportation in 1868 cleared the way for elected local government in 1870 and a mayoralty in 1887.